obsidian ant, our Lord and Savior, who came in and rescued us when we were in our darkest days and YouTube started privating our videos. Obsidian ant steps up, sends me an email, and he says, hey, DG, you need some help? I know a guy. I know a guy. I know a guy at YouTube. Ant-Man is our savior. He is our Lord and savior. I have put his channel on my YouTube channel. I, I don't expect anything. Uh, I don't expect anything in return. This man has how many subs? 288,000 subs. And he took a time out on a Saturday to email me and ask me if I need any help. <laughs> this is the awesomeness of Obsidian Ant. We already know from a face reveal he has the face of, a, of an Adonis. He has blue eyes that pierce your heart. This British gentleman and his ASMR vibes, they delight. An absolute afternoon delight, if you will. Skyrockets in flight. Thank you, Obsidian Ant, for saving DG360 and everybody here. You are our Lord and Savior forever, Ant-Man. What is he talking about here? A major important step for space games, Star Citizen 4.0. And if you will realize this, Obsidian Ant is very smart about how he's producing his content now. He saw the death of Frontier Developments, Elite Dangerous. He started to slide over to the sci-fi gaming genre, and he did it in a transition that was so smooth, just like his ASMR voice. And now you're seeing a lot more Star Citizen content uh wazi says do you have beef with fairster absolutely not in fact fairster has commented on our videos here many times and very nicely i think the only time that i was like upset and it wasn't directly at fairster was this the avenger one fairster debate that happened on space tomato wazi if you remember <laughs> And in which Avenger was a little apologetic, and I was like, eh, there doesn't need to be any apologies going on here, you know? And also that Ferrister didn't show his face, but hey, that's his own prerogative. But no, I personally have nothing against Ferrister. Nice dude. Comments on our videos from time to time. And uh, it's nice to see content creators comment on the videos, you know? So sorry, I had to interrupt. God, Wazzy, what are you doing to me here? Are you a big man? Huh? I'm talking to you. Shane, what? Shane you Bell the and a big boy pants. Big boy pants. Shane Look, I'm wearing and a big boy belt pants at the same time because you get me off track. You see, Wazzy, you just threw you threw it. Oh, you just I I can't recover from that. God damn it, Pepe, roll it up again, Wazzy. Shush, Wazzy. Shush. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Welcome to DG360. We didn't have like an impromptu change and have to restart this video over. That was just part of your imagination. There is no member here named Wazi. There is no member here named Wazi. He is dead to us. Wazi, you're dead to us. No, Shame. no, 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 no. Hold on. I need to do that again, Pepe. I need to do it again. Damn it. Damn it. I need to do it again. God damn it, Pepe. Obsidian Ant, enough said, Lord and Savior. Let's watch what he has to say about Star Citizen 4.0. He says, a major and important step for space games. Let's check it out, and let's, let's, see, let's see what he has to say. If you take a step back, the space game genre is in a very weird place right now. On the one hand, it's never been stronger, yet on the other hand, several titles appear to be heading in the wrong direction. The problem then, as far as I see it, is that innovation is lacking. For every No Man's Sky success story, there's multiple failures and mistakes coming from other games. Star Citizen's upcoming update then, 4.0, represents potentially a bold new direction for space games. 
In my opinion, the update and the content it will bring is something that the genre as a whole desperately needs. Yep. Now, it is possible that some people might feel I'm oversetting this or have turned shill, so let me explain. Five years ago, Star Citizen launched version 3.0 and along with it came the ability to land on planets. Initially, this comprised of three moons. Eventually though, it expanded to include worlds with full atmospheres, volumetric clouds, forests, oceans, frozen tundras, deserts, and even more. Cities, of course, are also a thing. Now, generally, Star Citizen planet tech development has been, well, very slow. And sure, the planets are not true scout, but let's face it, the planets have substantially improved over the years, and today, they are the best planets in space gaming. They are, they are the best planets in space gaming. Let me say this again. Let me say it a little bit slower for everybody. It's slow -mo These are the best planets in the space game. Thank you. That was a personalized slow mode time. We're changing it up. We're changing slow mode time up a little bit. I slow mode my own self down to one quarter DG speed. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you. That has been my uh, performance for slow mode today. Thank you, Pepe. Thank you. Thank you, Pepe. I appreciate that self induced slow mo. Now do it, Java. <laughs> For decades, space games have to show the ability to land on planets. After How's all, space games are about, well, space, right? <laughs> Wind Commander, Freelancer, the X-Series, even right online, on spot, all like the huge titles, each great in their own way. Yet they were lacking something fundamental. In 1993, Frontier Elite 2 <laughs> showed how much depth planetary landing could add to a game. You see, space games aren't just about space. Exploring the surface of unknown worlds, landing in cities, mining mountains, flying over coastlines and oceans, atmospheric combat, all of this adds extra powerful dimensions to the game. Planets are important then because they add scale, depth and meaning to the vast space that interconnects them. And without them, space really does feel empty no matter how much you populate it. Yes. Imagine Star Wars without Tatooine right. or Star Trek without strange new worlds or dude the planets and places are going to be so important and that's why detail is so important and that's why it's important to have artists that design these places in such a way that gives them a unique feel that you call one of these planets or moons home player retention there's so many variables involved with player retention in game design a home or a place you can call home that is different and not carbon copied like Elite Dangerous <laughs> with those damn stations where there's literally four or five cutouts that's the same four or five cutouts with all the billions of systems in that game, right? Dude, Stanton, it's taken so long, I get it. But these other systems are going to come online so fast when server meshing is flushed out and server meshing is is and I do believe that that uh, Benoit uh, is going to get this is going to see this through. I do think server meshing will be tackled and and that is something that they are going to it's going to revolutionize gaming and I think they're going to do it. I think it's going to take some time to do it, but when they get to that point, and server meshing is out the door. Watch out, because it Stanton. Is not gonna. There's the other systems are already in the works, and they're just waiting. They're just waiting for when server meshing comes out. All the, you know, with all the employees that there are there, what do you think they're doing? <laughs> of course, they're they're working on other systems. They have to Squadron Forty Two. That's why it burned me up when morphologists said that there was like nothing going to happen with anything in the PU because all the focus was going to be on squadron 42. Am I taking him out of context? No, because that's exactly what he said. And you know, nothing against morphologists, but I completely disagree with that, that opinion. So much is happening because focus is on squadron 42. It's quite the opposite. 
A system design is happening behind the scenes. Most of these systems are flushed out because of Squadron 42. So when server meshing hits, man, boom, 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 boom. You're going to see systems pop up so fast you won't know what to do. At least that's my that's my take on it. I could be wrong. But that's that's what I think. Because a lot of these systems have to be designed for Squadron 42. They had to be put in the game. It's an uninformed opinion. You know, when Morphologist said that with his subscriber base of like 200,000 plus people, I thought to myself, man, that's just so uninformed. That shows a lack of understanding in game development. You know, to think that those systems uh, aren't being designed right now or some of them are close to being finished is just a complete lack of of understanding of game development. But hey, you know. The Expanse without Earth and Mars. The problem is that planets are a massive challenge for developers. Must I like his architect videos. Numerous games had them. <laughs> you know, Each has done so I just don't agree with his, his stance on game Space development. I don't think it's very well informed. Landable worlds. Meanwhile, No Man's Sky has trillions of landable planets. Now, whilst No Man's Sky and Space Engineers are highly respected, and rightly so, they do have one undermining flaw, and that's a pretty simple, straightforward one. The planets lack any sense of realism. For realistic-looking worlds, then, players would need... Although in NMS's defense, which I don't generally stand up for No Man's Sky a lot, it's really not supposed to be there for realism. The art in NMS is absolutely abstract, and that's why I love it in terms of the aesthetic. I don't like the gameplay primarily because the MMO factor is not there. I understand it's not generally viewed as an MMO, but my favorite type of game or genre of game is MMO. I love player interaction. I love a game that can have an MMO base where they've balanced it to the degree, the game developer balances it to the degree where if you want to go solo mode and do your PvE grind, it's there. And if you want to have the player interaction, it's there. That balance is so damn important to keep the game alive. And I don't get that with NMS. I don't get that MMO vibe. I don't see people around me. I know you can team up with other people, but it's still very hard. I'm hearing from people that love NMS. We have a member here in our community called Tech. What's up, Anarchy? Welcome back, dude. And Tech is this really philosophical, cool dude, you know, really chill guy. And he he liked, he, at one particular time, he liked to play NMS. And he, he hated when I ragged on NMS. And personally, I love what Sean did with Hello Games and No Man's Sky. And I think, you know, that road to redemption where he continually puts out free DLC is fantastic. Because uh, initially he over-promised and under-delivered. So kudos to Sean for actually, like, following up and continuing with that free DLC. It's awesome. And it, it's great to see. So I have love for NMS. I have love for what Sean did and how he turned the boat around. I really do. It's hard to do that. Uh, but it's just not my cup of tea because it doesn't have that MMO flavor to it. I love that MMO flavor. Uh, Donnie says, uh, the deal with Morph, he is more focused about the end result and less about the journey. I agree. He's more focused on that end. And so he's getting kind of bitter and frustrated, you know, and I can understand that he's been involved with the project a long time. Uh, I've been with this since like 2014. So I get that. I get that totally. Um, I agree with what Morph says, but I don't care. I enjoy the road to release regardless of time. Need to look elsewhere. It was in 2015 then that arguably the best version of Planetary Landing appeared in the form of Elite Dangerous Expansion, Horizons. The Horizons planets in 2015 really were something else. Elite though appeared to have technical problems and its landable worlds went through a variety of iterations, some worse, some better. Iterations aside, however, Elite was stuck with the same planet types for six no long atmospheres. years. No then, atmospheres in, in any other planets. With the arrival of this Odyssey is such and bullshit, other expansion, this. new planets arrived. <laughs> this is all bullshit here. This Odyssey is just like crazy. The problem, as so many will know, Odyssey was plagued by difficulties. Additionally, changes to the game drastically reduced the quality of the original landable worlds that were first introduced in Horizons. Developers Frontier never managed to overcome these difficulties, and in April of 2022, they admitted they would no longer even try and would instead refocus their attention elsewhere. It does. It looks Thus, so dated. You're right, Ash. Really so bad. Previous generation look and feel. In 2022, the space game genre is arguably in the strongest position it has ever been. I mentioned that earlier. No Sky goes from strength to strength, 
X4 continues to receive numerous expansions. Everspace 2 makes regular fantastic progress. And you know, God if X4 was an MMO. Oh my God, if X4 had player interaction, that would be my jam. That would be my jam if they did that. There's Starfield on the horizons. That may or may not be good. I don't think Starfield is going to be great. I don't, I don't think Starfield is going to be as good as people are saying it is. Or maybe not. Well, I think Bethesda is going to drop the type, ball on it. But how they're implemented, no one yet knows. At least no one outside of Bethesda. Now, the real problem here is the key ingredient of the next generation of quality planets at least in today's titles, oh, shit, is very sorry, much guys. lacking. It seems <laughs> then that Full World Tech is only being pushed by two companies. <laughs> Let's nah. go with Microsoft Flight Simulator, which contains a full accurate one-to-one -one copy of Earth, featuring some of the best graphics that have ever been put in a video game. The other company is CIG with Star Citizen. And this is where we get back to the next update, or the future update rather, update 4.0. The update according to CIG, will contain not only a brand new star system, but also numerous planets on which to land. Now, these worlds are not just any copies of previous worlds. Instead, they are visually distinct and graphically impressive, highly detailed planets. Worlds that have their own biome. Best looking worlds planets that are visually in interesting. Pyro 3, for example, is as visually recognizable in Star Citizen as Tatooine is in Star Wars. Look at this. It is at this step, then, that I filled the space game genre. Who's saying that Star Citizen looks dated? I see that comment every once in a while. Oh, Star Citizen is going to be so dated looking. Dude, has Star Citizen only looked dated when they first came out and all you had was the hangar and arena commander? Literally, the only time Star Citizen ever looked dated to me was its very inception <laughs> because they were just starting out and they just had the hangar modules and they just had Arena Commander. And that is the only time that Star Citizen has ever, ever looked dated. Who are these people that are saying that Star Citizen looks dated? Did you see what I saw? Like, look at what I'm seeing here. 4.0. Who in the right the update, fucking mind is saying CIG, that this looks dated not only at a brand new all. star system, look but also at this. numerous planets on which to land. Now, these worlds are not just barren copies of previous worlds. <laughs> Instead, they are visually distinct and graphically impressive, highly detailed planets. Worlds that have their own biome. Worlds that are visually interesting. Pyro 3, for example, is as visually recognizable in Star Citizen as Tatooine is in Star Wars. It is at this step, then, that I filled this. Yeah, when we're talking about the engine, yeah, you E5. Yeah, 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 Dylan. <laughs> Listen, there's a lot of people worried about Star Engine, right? There's a lot of people worried about Star Engine. There's, there's some valid reasons to be a little concerned. However, I think they're doing pretty fucking good with it. If you ask me, um, <laughs> I can get lost so easy playing Star Citizen just looking at things around me. I, I can't say that about a lot of games. You know, the last time I felt so immersive in a game uh, in terms of like looking around was Red Dead Redemption. Or I would say probably really old school dating back to GTA 5 in terms of getting lost in environments, you know? Oh, Mortal Online 2 is switching to UE5. That's a winning decision right there, Lou. That is really good. Red says, if it is, if it is up to the big publishers, we get only cheap mobile games. <laughs> right, right, Red, right. <laughs> DY says, this is the fruit of SIG driving themselves to near mental breakdown at times during the past decade. Right, right, DY. I love your guys' comments. Very point. Very point on. The space game genre desperately needs. In my opinion, one thing that makes sci-fi so incredible is the sense of being immersed in different worlds, yes. different galaxies. Right. The feeling right. of being transported somewhere else. Right. Of right. course, to an extent, on all games do this. But I feel that space games need to convey this in a deeper sense than many other games. <laughs> And this Look for the this. very reason that you are literally moving from world to world. And therefore, world Listen. really need to look interesting. And Listen, I have a 1080, okay? If you want to talk about a person who has a very dated GPU, 
I have a 1080. And on that 1080, I'm above 30 frames per second. Some people will be like, ah, that's just bullshit, 30 frames per second. But honestly, guys, it's 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 good. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with those frame rates according to what we're seeing here. And I can tell you, I've seen things like this on my 1080. <laughs> Mass Effect, good example, Doc. Doc says, last time I would get lost in an environment was Mass Effect. That's such a good example. Mass Effect series. Oh, my God. The the, the Emmy series is just fantastic. <laughs> Red says, 30 frames is peasants. Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't like 60 or more, right? But I got a 1080, okay? And let me tell you, with my 1080, I'm over 30 frames per second, and I see amazing shit with my 1080. Yeah, Ash is getting 52. <laughs> it's ancient. So I really think this is overblown when you see comments in YouTube sections about people, you know, like, oh, I need this really expensive rig in order to run Star Citizen. I mean, you need to upgrade your SSD drive. You need to upgrade your 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 memory to at least 32 gigabytes would be my suggestion. Yes, you got to put a little money into it. But it's not nearly what people think in order to have a good experience. Anarchy says, I have a 1070. Orson says, I have a 1080. It looks amazing. Lou says, Lou, are, uh, listen, Lou's saying 30 to 60 frames on a, 10, uh, on a 1650. 1660 for bingo, 50 consistently frames per second. Yes. It's about it's primarily about your CPU and your RAM. And if you watched today, you saw a thirty percent increase when we watch Planet Wally's video. That highlight will be out for the week. You guys aren't going to want to miss that thirty percent increase for Intel uh, chipsets. Thirty percent increase by by changing a few settings. So that that highlight's going to hit and different one from the other. When you get into your spaceship and leave one location, it needs to feel like a journey. And when you arrive at your destination, it needs to feel dramatically different to the place you left. Variations on color palette just <laughs> don't Anarchy. cut it. Might star Citizen's upcoming pyro star system then, theoretically at least, should deliver variation in abundance. Now, Star Citizen 4.0 isn't all about new locations. Oh, congratulations it's also to about you. New gameplay and new underlying architecture. Farron. CRG have spent the last few years developing a new technology to which will recreate the foundation upon which Star Citizen is built. The technology is known as server meshing. This will be arriving with the 4.0 <laughs> update. A preceding layer of this tech will be delivered later this year in patch 3.18. When done, I'm seeing Ant is so soothing to listen to. <laughs> level of persistence not usually seen He's in doing so games. well. He's killing it with that the ASMR voice. That every object will have a <laughs> permanent place within I'm, the game. For example, every object will have a permanent place in this space sim. <laughs> like I need to, I need to have a a week. I gotta have a week where I have a British affect, like just talk, just speak in a British accent, like. Maybe we should do that next week where, like, I don't tell anybody anything and I start the show that way. Hello. Welcome to DG360. Cheerio. So glad you can make it today. Going to watch a video by Obsidian Hand. <laughs> I love him. I love the dude. Love we'll drop any object in the forest <laughs> in the guy. world of Microtech this guy. and there I love it will him. remain. <laughs> Return months later and assuming no one else has taken it, the object will still be there. So this actually opens up a lot of avenues for gameplay. This type of technology, quack, this quack, level of persistence, can be used you know, in my many different areas of the game. Along with server meshing, which will allow for multiple star systems and higher numbers of players, patch 4.0 will mark the moment that Star Citizen, arguably at least, becomes a true game. But yes, Star Citizen will still be an alpha with version 4.0. No one knows when, or perhaps even if, Star Citizen will ever leave its alpha state. Many active players, however... <laughs> I mean, like, that's an understatement. <laughs> really don't seem to care. Further, we don't. CIG themselves we don't. don't even seem to... Call us crazy. 
but we don't, you know? What we're finding out in game development is that the longer you can focus on a project without having to worry about deadlines, the more detail you can get, the better the gameplay. I mean, this is this is what we're learning about game development. The way in which Cloud Imperium is going about this is quite different than any other game. The, the revolution, the revolutionizing the way that game development happens. They're getting support directly from the backers. I cannot emphasize this point enough of how different gaming will be because of Star Citizen and game development, let me say. Game development will take a drastic shift. We're, we're, we've already been seeing it the past five or six years where more and more game devs are, are doing their own thing by, by getting backing directly from the people that want to play the game. And I would say Star Citizen attributes to a lot of that uh, reasoning why people, why, why developers are going directly to the backers. The it's not always the great. Tag in much of their promotional materials. <laughs> Sometimes it goes bust. CIG's Chronicles of Valyria. And more importantly, how they finance the project continue to generate a lot of controversy. Many people, understandably, have grown increasingly cynical about Star Citizen and CIG. This is perhaps underscored by the relative shallow content that has been released in recent times. The rest of 2022 also looks like slim pickings when it comes to new content. There will be new content, of course, but expectations on depth and breadth of this year's content should certainly be kept in check. Listen, again, this, this, it's an overblown concern. <laughs> like, we've already got new game mechanics coming into the game, you know? I think a lot of people have 2022 wrong. I, I think a lot of content creators have a very wrong opinion about this focus shift to Squadron 42 being bad. Again, I literally think what we're going to see is streamlining in three areas. First, in AI. You're going to see AI improve huge in 2022. What else are you going to see? Probably a better, more streamlined flight experience, okay, because of Squadron 42. So there's two things already. Third thing, well, I think what we're going to end up seeing is once Squadron 42 gets out the door, I, I, I think it'll do fairly well. That's a gamble. That part is a gamble. I don't know. How many of you watching think that Squadron 42 is going to be successful? Put one in the chat if you think Squadron 42 is going to bring in a lot of money, like something worth taking the time and effort that they've put into Squadron 42. Or type two if you don't think it will. Put one in the chat if you think Squadron 42 is going to bring in a ton of revenue. Two in the chat if you don't. I'm curious what chat says. So far, it looks like ones have it. Um, fingers saying two. Red is saying one, two. It's a, it's, it looks like it's pretty favorable towards one, but there's a couple concerns. Yeah, to me, D Dylan's always trying to be different. You're always trying to be – Dylan and Bingo, you're always trying to be different. <laughs> That's good. Keep being different. Uh <laughs> Like, here's here's the interesting thing to me. I would say it's a gamble. I mean, this is a gamble. You know, I I, I I don't know which way to lean on it. I just don't. I know that there was a ton of expense in, in paying for those actors and in paying for that top tier actor list, you know, that we've got. In so, many ways, then, I'm pretty sure it, it seems was expensive. CIG are betting everything on 4.0. This isn't unprecedented. Yeah, I think, I think you're right, Fingers. I think you're right about that. Yet, if CIG can deliver, then this will be a huge step, not just for Star Citizen, but also for space gaming <laughs> in general. <laughs> Red. To this date, the variety and, more importantly, the quality and visual realism of the world's... You know, that's, something, that's really something to consider, Ash. Ash says it has to be good. If it isn't, SC might not recover from the bad press. There is that angle. There is that angle that, like, you know, people who are not aware of Star Citizen or the Persistent Universe don't play online, and they're just going at it first time Squadron 42, and Squadron 42 is not a good experience. There is that aspect where, you know, that that bad experience might cross over, and you might lose some of that player base, you know? It's interesting. It's a good angle. I didn't think of that, Ash. What I would offer is something that simply doesn't exist in any other space game. Like it or not, CIG are currently the only studio pushing this aspect of the genre forwards. Listen, there he is. And really, that is something 
that is deeply needed. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time. Yep, that ASMR, that smooth, buttery ASMR. Go over there. Subscribe to our Lord and Savior, Obsidian Ant, who saved us from YouTube persecution. Love the dude.